Good morning. Good morning. I would like to welcome you to worship this morning. Today is Communion Sunday, so I hope you come with your hearts prepared for that. Immediately following worship today, we're having an administrative council meeting immediately following worship this morning. Looking ahead, we have our soup, rummage, and bake sale on March 11th at 9 a.m. Soon there will be a sign-up sheet if you're a soup maker or a baker. Otherwise, come with your um, hunger that day <laughs> and maybe buy some goodies and, and, or treasures. I won't be here. She won't be here. Okay. She won't be here. Any other announcements that should be made this time? Yes. I have an announcement. Um, about, oh, actually, it was Christmas Eve. I came down and the water in the little bathroom wouldn't work. Right. Because the pipes had started to freeze up. Luckily, I called Pierce Burris. He came down. We saved it, turned all the heat up, the radiator sold it all out. We put a note on the door. This door must remain open and um, went out in use. Right. So the other night, Friday, I guess it was, whatever, Thursday, Friday, whenever it was, yeah. the cold snap was coming, um, I had Mary and her pull up out front. I ran in, I turned the heat up to 59 in both places to make sure the door was propped open. When I came here yesterday, the bathroom door was shut. So somebody, it wasn't cold shut, but it was all the way shut. So somebody had done that and were really, really lucky with that cold weather because nothing froze up. So please be mindful of that bathroom door. Um, Janie and Ruth aren't here, so could you please tell them this message? Okay. Because I know they're in the church a lot. Okay. So. So make sure if you use the potty that you leave the door open when you leave. Not while you're in there, but when you leave. Not while you're in there. Please. Not while you're in there. Some things we leave, you know, to the imagination. Um, and it's mainly when it's really cold, like it. Been. Yeah. Was this week. Right. That they don't freeze up again because we saw how easily they froze up on Christmas Eve. Right, right. It wasn't cold for very long, so. Okay, just be mindful of that door if you either here or using the bathroom to leave it open when you're done. Is there any way that it's like stripped and shut or anything? Well, I'm not sure it's dropped open. So it could just have somebody been in and it. Like, drifted shut. I tried to check yesterday. I left a little bit and it moved about that much and then stopped. Oh. So I don't think so. But I mean, I don't know because it, with the stained glass windows that are there, I don't think the storm windows in all of them are where they should be. Right. I think it's just enough. Right. Hmm. So maybe you know, we should figure some way to. Well, I have that radiator there and I put that against it and prop it open from when we thought it out, but we need to get out for store stuff. Any other announcements? Well, let's go to God in prayer this morning. Lord, today is Communion Sunday, and so we come today with our hearts humble, ready to receive your word and whatever you want us to hear. Lord, I ask you to have us have our open minds and hearts for that. And bless our time as we worship this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. One thing I did forget to mention that I want to start doing on the first Sundays of the month is doing a different creed. There's several in our hymnal, and so today we are going to do a different one. We're going to do the Nicene Creed. So you will have to open your hymnals when we get to that point, unless you've memorized that one. I haven't. <laughs> it's a little long, but we're going to try that one. That's a historic creed of the church as well. So let's... Please stand if you're able for the call to worship. That is located in your boat. O oh God, teach us and empower us to be courageous when we share your message. The same way Jesus was and Send us to those who were rejected and to those who are in need. Know there is hope of love and acceptance by God and by us. 
God, empower us to embrace the love of the rejected and love the rejected, those in need, those who have hurt us, and the oppressed. God, anoint us to go to the highways of the world to share your message of hope. Our first hymn is number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. Nicene Creed actually came before the Apostles' Creed. So if you want to talk about going back and, and doing something traditional, this is definitely it. Let's join together in this historic creed of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you. 
Howdy to your neighbors. Howdy. You may be seated. Now it's time to share your joys and concerns. What's on your hearts this morning? Yes, Wanda. And your grandson's name is? Siri. Siri. C-E-I-R-A-N. No offense, but I gotta spell it how I know how to say it. So that's not how it's gonna go. Sear N. Like searing meat. Yes, searing. I'll probably say it wrong, but God knows. So Siren has pink eye, which can be very uncomfortable, especially as a kid, and you wanna Scratch your eyes off and pray it doesn't get worse. Yes, yeah, Sally? Um, a couple of different things. One is Carol's doing okay. I think her fall from last week might have been because they had compression socks on her and they were rolled up on her ankles so oh. tight it was swelling. Mm -hmm. So while she was walking, I don't think she could feel her feet. Uh. grateful that the fall wasn't too bad and that maybe we figured out why and the can remedy do that. I'm also grateful for the new position that's closer. I saw him. Yes, go ahead. So, that. would they have given him strong medicine and stuff? Yeah. Just like a little, you know, the temperature. I think he, he um, the medicine is her temperature broke. Okay. But, and she's got some kind of a rash. They think it's an allergy. They don't know. They don't know where it came from. And with her scratching it, of all places, part of it's on her butt. So, she's very uncomfortable. Oh, okay. So pay for Lucy who has bad ear infection and a rash. Shirley, yeah, I saw your hand too. I just want to get on a happier note. I leave for Florida next Saturday. So keep me in your and I'll be traveling a lot. I'll fly down with my daughter, but uh, I'll be there for about a month. So. Hey, I love it will be longer. <laughs> <laughs> Party at Ed's on Saturday night, baby. <laughs> Okay. And Saturday you leave? Yes, next Saturday. Okay. okay. Also, my brother in law, Brian, he has to have biopsy on his thyroid. He's had trouble with his thyroid for several years now, so now it's biopsy. Okay, so it's Brian is having a biopsy on his thyroid. I saw a little hand in the back. Yeah. James Clock Supremus. It's Jody's uncle Jim, and we're all close to. He had a stroke the other night. And he's gaining back. His function is pretty good. His, his speech is lagging behind. So they're working on that and they're hoping he'll recover nicely. Um, and also, I'd like to add the family and friends of Mike Thompson. He was a friend of a lot of ours that we went to Fair Christian with that, that we just 
Fuck as in fucking flout? Okay. Watch how I say it, James. No fucking chicken flour. I'll just say, say James. <laughs> I might say that wrong, so I might just say James. I see. Her. So Donna's been in the hospital and had a, a reaction to some of her treatments, and they're also testing her for lupus. So be in prayer for Donna. Can you pray? Yes, okay. Let's keep our country in prayer. Okay. We really need it. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and it's a good thing we don't. Yeah, sometimes it is. You know, same way with us. We don't know what's going to happen to us down the road and mm -hmm. to Ruben. Right. So we definitely pray for our country. Right, there's a fire, I don't know if you guys know, right in the middle of Cedarville on Main Street. Somebody's house, and I don't know the name, and nobody seems to know the name, but it's near Betty French's house, I guess. It's not me. But, um, yeah, so we in prayer, because it was still blocked off when we came at 10.20. And it had been since 8 o'clock, at least, that they're still fighting it. Um, just pray everyone got out okay. And, you know, let things be placed. Seems everybody knows the, the, the husband passed. And, like, we don't know who, what the name of the person is. So, um, but God does. So that's what matters. Yes? Yeah, my daughter Mary told me. Let me know that uh, Bob Lowe had passed away. Uh, Bob Lowe did pass. Okay. Okay, so Bob Lowe passed. We've been praying for him. Okay. Okay. So be in prayer for all that knew Bob Lowe as well. Anything else? Yes. Raymond. Yeah, I heard yesterday that Albert Castle Sr. is in the hospital. Okay. Okay, it says Albert Caster. Casper. Casper, like a friendly ghost. Okay, Casper is in the hospital. Okay. Anything else? prayer for Bridgeton schools um, as there's more of a police presence and um, just pray for peace as well especially all our teachers I couldn't do it 
I substituted, but that was about as far as I can go with that. And that's messed. <laughs> Anything else we want to be praying about? Right. That somebody committed suicide okay. in the car, and right. then the cops came in. Right. But I don't know the whole thing, but for this family of whoever this person was. Right. Well, anyway, that they died, we do know that it was confirmed that someone passed away. I'm not sure yeah. all the ins and outs, but we can definitely pray for that family. If he did die, they had a weight. Um, right, like a tarp. Um, So be in prayer for their family as well. Anything else we want to be praying about? That's plenty. <laughs> a lot going on. All right, let's go to God in prayer this morning. Lord, there is a lot on our hearts and minds this morning. So help us to focus just for a little while. Before, before we do that, we want to lay our concerns on, at your feet so we can concern ourselves with what, what we want to do today. First, we want to lift up those we regularly remember, Ed and Shirley, Ruth Lupton, Ruth McGargy, Chase, Mary Bell, and Louise. We're grateful for these church people. We ask that these people that are dear to us, that you would bless them and then feel your love. Be with Shirley as she's going to travel, that you would keep her safe. Be with Ed as he's going to be by himself, that uh, he can stay occupied, and then he will anticipate her coming back home. We lift up Josh Wolf, who's serving in the Navy, and she would keep him safe. Any unspoken requests, Lord, I ask you to hear those as well. For those with cancer, for Donna, Connie, baby Layla, Sherry Fisher Riley, we especially lift up Donna to you because she's been in the hospital all week. And she's having complications with her treatments. And now we're teaching her uh, testing for lupus. So I pray that they find solutions and they can develop a new plan for her. Be with her. She travels and keep her safe as well. We pray for healing for John Gorman, baby John, Cheryl Ripper, and Debbie and Joe. We also lift up Art and Sue Lewis, who have been dealing with COVID. I pray that they are feeling better on the mend, back to normal. We also have many that we, we prayed for. Uh, we had this man, Austin, who had been in a hit and run. I pray you continue to heal him. We also uh, lift up Saren, who has pink eye. Never fun at any age, but at that age is probably unbearable. So I pray that he doesn't touch it or irritate it more so he doesn't have to go to the hospital. It doesn't develop uh, any worse. We also lift up Carol. We're grateful that the fall wasn't that serious. We pray that they would uh, be able to fix her compression things so they don't cut off her circulation, and that they would just be able to be more attentive to keep her safe. We're grateful for Sally having a dis closer position to her kids and family and to us, <laughs> and we're grateful for her wanting to give back as well. We pray for Al Albert Casper, who is in the hospital. You know whatever need it is he has. I pray that he would get better and come home soon. We pray for Lucy, who has a bad ear infection. Very icky. And a rash. <laughs> Poor kid is being tortured from head to toe, it seems like. And so, Lord, I ask for healing for her. And be with her mom and dad and anyone that takes care of her, that they would have patience and extra grace because she's probably miserable. We pray for the Bridgeton School District, especially this morning, and that you would be with them and bless the teachers and administrators that you, and the children, that you would keep them safe, be with the police that are in there, that they would uh, be mindful of the situation that is there. We pray for the family of Mike Thompson, and that you would bless them and comfort them in this time. We pray for also the, the person that passed in the Home Depot parking lot, regardless of how they passed. We pray for their family, that you would comfort them, and anyone that witnessed this and dealt with the situation, you would comfort their hearts as well. We pray for James, 
Clark, who had a stroke. He seems to be improving and pray for his speech to be improved as well and continue to heal him. Brian is having a biopsy, Lord, and nobody likes to wait for results. <laughs> so I pray that you would comfort him and give him your peace and that they would find nothing wrong. We pray for our country. It seems that there's a lot of craziness going on, more so all the time. But maybe it's just because we do know more than we used to. I pray that you would calm our hearts and minds, knowing that you are in control regardless of what the media says or what really happens, that you are still in control. And I pray that you would bless our church as we worship you this day. And hear us now as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for the children's moment. I'm gonna ask the kids to come down front this time. I'm going to measure you guys. Want to see how tall you are? See how tall you are. I thought it would be fun to measure some of you and see how tall you are because some people are rather tall. We're blessed with that. And some of us, like me, are short. Me and poor Danny are the same height. So I guess it's good that I didn't grow any taller, maybe. <laughs> but I can remember when I was age of some of you, I wasn't very tall. And many times I had trouble reaching things on the high shelf. You ever have that problem? You want to get something? And, you cook the, and parents will hide stuff up there, too, don't they? Yeah, because they think you don't have smarts. So you get a footstool or chair and climb up there and get the cookies, right? But if there's a tall person sitting in front of me, like at a movie, and I have to do one of these things, lean to one side or the other, because I still have to do that. But they made them now a little better so you don't have that problem. So what are some challenges that you know of when people are have when they're short? Can you think of anything else? Or anybody else? They were reaching the pedals on a car. Of course, that'd be an old car. You wouldn't be able to move the pedal. I know that's fun. Finding clothes that you don't have to hem up. Oh, yeah. Finding the right clothes. You might. You have to get petites or you have to hem them. And not, not too many people know how to hem things these days. So lost I, it. I always say I'm not too fat. I'm just too short. If yeah. I was taller, I would look thinner. Yeah, I've been just right. God should have grew me a couple more inches. <laughs> His fault. 
Now, I don't have to tell you the problems of being short in a world full of tall people. You face that every day. Now, today's Bible lesson I'm going to be talking about is about a man who was very short. His name was Zacchaeus. And you may know the story. We learned a song in Sunday school when was said, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And this is the part where it gets fuzzy for me. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, and this is the part I always love, Zacchaeus, you come down. That was always the best part. For I'm coming to your house today. Coming to your house today. Yes, we sang a lot of crazy songs in Sunday school in my day. When Jesus came by, he saw this wee little man in the tree. Jesus looked up at him, called him by name. Jesus knew his name, and he knows your name too. But he said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly. I'm going to your house and be a guest. He invited himself over, apparently. And Zacchaeus took Jesus into his home. The people could not believe that Jesus would go into his house. Because Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and we didn't like them because, first of all, they had money, and they stole from people. So we didn't like him too much. But Jesus changed Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus said, I'm going to give half of all that I own to the poor. And if I cheat at anybody, I'll give them four times more back. So God really changed him. Jesus forgave him and said, today salvation has come to your house. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name, and he knew everything Zacchaeus did. Everybody did. It was a town, you know. Everybody talks. And when Zacchaeus met Jesus, his life changed. It doesn't matter if you're short or you're tall. Jesus knows your name, too. All of y'all's names. And Jesus knows everything about you. So let's pray. Dear God, we know that when we meet Jesus, it will be a life-changing experience. Thank you that Jesus knows our name and loves us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me measure your baby. All right, our next hymn is number 389. I don't know how the numbers worked out that way this week. 389, freely, freely. Please stand up, Abel, and sing with me. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke, and like I mentioned, we're going to read about Zacchaeus, the wee little man. Luke 19, verses 1 through 10. 
Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was one of the most influential Jews in the Roman tax collecting business. And he'd become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowds. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree beside the road so he could watch from there. And when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down, for I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the crowds were displeased. He has gone to the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, I will give half of my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have overcharged people in their taxes, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a son of Abraham. And I, the son of man, have come to seek and save those like him who are lost. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. When you hear the name Zacchaeus, what's the first thing you think of? It may be the song I've been taught about, this children's song. It was my brother's favorite song. You know, like I said, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he, climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. At least that's what I think of. When, and in many ways, it perfectly tells the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is a Sunday school classic. And it's tempting to leave Zacchaeus with the children so we can grown-ups can move on into bigger things. But this morning, we're going to take a second look, or third or fourth or fifth look, probably by this point, at this wee little man. He may be small in stature, but he looms large as an example of what it means to have a new, fresh start. Now, Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector in Jericho, a sizable city in Jesus' day. He paid the price for his title because Rome demanded the full tax be paid up front. Once the coins were in their treasury, Zacchaeus received the power to levy taxes to recover his money. So he put his money up first. But he hired tax collectors to make sure he made a profit a handsome return on his investment. And Zacchaeus was known as making offers you couldn't refuse, right? He was a little man, but a big shot. He was a villain, a pestilence, a blight. Because of him, good days weren't so good, and bad days were worse. Because <laughs> the shadow of Zacchaeus loomed large. He had to get his. The price was paid by every man, woman, and child there in Jericho. Their blood, sweat, and tears footed the bill for every party he threw, even the party he threw for Jesus. Ironically, the name Zacchaeus means clean and upright. <laughs> Quite a name for a public official, a corrupt public official. He was dirty. So what was this evil tax collector doing, making a fool of himself? just to see Jesus. A famous teacher of Jesus was known as. Perhaps even the Messiah has come to their town. Everybody was talking about it. So what? What does this have to do with his life? There was money to be made, but he wouldn't collect a cent by climbing up a tree to see this visiting celebrity. So what makes Jesus worth it? worth the distraction. Zacchaeus knew what he was, and he knew he had a problem. He had sold his soul and found out that the price was too steep for him. He longed for a second chance, a fresh start, but who would give him a second chance? 
Would Jesus give him a second chance? A man in this position would be well informed, and knowledge is power. The power is all he had. Informed sources told him amazing stories about Jesus. People called Jesus a friend of sinners. He gave a Pharisee fits. <laughs> he saved a woman caught in adultery. And one of his disciples, his closest followers, was also a tax collector named Matthew. Zacchaeus knew enough to know that he wanted and needed to know more. He needed to know if Jesus would give him that second chance. Because if he wouldn't do it, nobody would. He knew firsthand, Zacchaeus did, of what Jesus taught. Luke 9, 25 says, What does it profit a man? They gain the whole world but lose themselves. He knew that. And he longed for the lost to be found. So the possibility of a second chance drew him that day. It lured him from his secure estate and a comfortable life he had. It led him to join the throngs of people. Some of them would have been happy to stab him in the side and make a spectacle. He made a spectacle of himself by climbing a tree. Can you imagine how long it had been since Zacchaeus climbed a tree? Think the last time you climbed a tree. He was a bureaucrat, a desk jockey. The heaviest lifting he'd done involved goblets of wine. He was in no shape to be climbing a tree, but he didn't care. He struggled. He made a fool of himself. People probably laughed, and he didn't care. He was willing to do anything and risk everything for a second chance. So he is stepping out of his comfort zone, and we need to do that too. Let go of our pride and dare to believe God isn't finished with me yet. New life can be yours. New life begins when we're true to ourselves. We admit we can't do it on our own. We all need Jesus. And Jesus saw Zacharias. He saw him. He knew him. He named him by name and made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. He said, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for I must stay at your house. I have to realize the context. Jesus is on borrowed time. He's on his way to Jerusalem and he didn't have far to go. Jericho was one of his last stops. And this was the lowest and oldest city on earth, located in a rift valley just a few miles upstream from the Dead Sea. It has its own checkered history. When Joshua led Israel across the Jordan into the Promised Land, and Job 1 was the Battle of Jericho, with another song we know about the walls come tumbling down. Now another wall is about to come down. Jesus is the new Joshua. Jesus, Joshua is actually the same name. He is on his way to the lowest point of his life, the cross. And he stops on the way to the lowest city on earth and looks up and sees the lowest man in that town and offers him a second chance. Of course, the town folk grumble because that's what we do. <laughs> and who can blame them? Grace is scandalous precisely because it is grace. It's a gift that's free, because it, and it's God's gift to give. It's a gift because we don't earn it, and none of us deserve it, but we can receive it. So Zacchaeus seizes this second chance. He receives Jesus' gift and responds with true repentance. He doesn't dwell on his past, so he doesn't wallow in it. In his misery, he doesn't say, woe is me, I'm a bad person. He makes a fresh start with a clean slate. It says, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, half of my possessions I give to the poor, and if I've defrauded anyone, I give back four times. True repentance doesn't look back. It doesn't focus on the past. It looks forward. Forward to the new life that God is offering Forward to the promises yet to come. Forward to the possibility of what God and the new life with him would be. True repentance lives today for us in the confident home that God has good things 
in store for tomorrow. True repentance is the first step as a prisoner takes out of their cell. We are free. Free to do the right thing we wanted to do, but we're afraid to. Free to make up the choice that deep down we know is the best choice, but whispers of doubt keep deterring us from doing so. We're free to be who we really are and not who we've allowed ourselves to become. True repentance takes a chance. It seizes the moment and steps out in faith. We're not in our comfortable zone. It's uncomfortable there. Because we're not in control. Letting go and surrounding God isn't always comfortable. It's terrifying and exhilarating. Because when we take that step, we discover we are not alone. The moment we dare to be a disciple and follow Jesus, he says to us, Today, salvation has come to this house. Because we too are sons and daughters of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek the lost are you ready to take that chance? Is today your day to come clean? Do you need a new start? Jesus is looking for you to do the right thing. Not because you have to, but because it's the deep longing in your heart. Let go of your pride and dare to believe that God isn't finished with you yet. Jesus hasn't come to make you somebody you're not. He has come to set you free to be who you really are. And there's more to come. Take your chance. Step out in faith. True repentance is the mark of a disciple. Let's pray. Lord, if we've done anything that keeps us from you, Lord, we, we lay it at your feet. Especially as we go to the altar today, we're going to leave that there. And let today be a new start for us. In your name we pray. As I mentioned, it is Communion Sunday, so I ask you to turn to page 12 in your hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment of silent prayer before God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we're yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name 
and join in an unending hymn. Son Jesus Christ, by the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, till Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So the table has been set. I like to remind people in the United Methodist Church, we have an open table. Anybody who wants to come may. So come as the Spirit and our usher may have direct you. Sorry, I gave you extra. Maybe you need it. Body of Christ, given for you. you. May take and eat. Remember that Christ died for you. Take and drink. One thing I love about communion is that, first of all, we do it together. <laughs> and we're reminded that the church comes together, most of us, once a month. Because we're meant to do this together. <laughs> and it's also a reminder what Christ did for us. God loved you so much that he came to this world to save you and me. <laughs> And so arise in peace, knowing that God loves you. Amen. Can you get up? I can give you a hand. I was say it won't be much up to you. <laughs>
Christ given for you. By your Christ given for you. Using it enough, here you go. By your Christ given for you. You take and eat. Remember that Christ died for you. Take and drink. We talked today in church about being a fresh start. Zacchaeus was given another start. He wasn't that good of a person in our eyes anyway. And uh, you can, we can have a fresh start too. So maybe if there's something in your life that you feel like God is convicting you of, leave here, leave that mess here. And arise and go knowing God, you are forgiven. And live a different life. Amen. You thought I was going to forget the offering, but dang it, I remember. Hot diggity dog. I was about to say, huh, now we continue to worship the Lord by presenting our tithes and our offerings. you would accept this offering and bless our church as we try to serve you. In your name we pray. Amen. Don't forget there's a council meeting right now to deal with the treasurer situation and plan for our actual council meetings. So if you're on that council or want to be some input, please stay afterwards. Now to see the benediction. Friends, let's go in the company of hope. God's love can and does miraculous things, things we cannot yet dream of ourselves and things we cannot yet imagine for each other. So with such faith in the liberating power of love, go in peace. Amen.